as an all-rounder few cars match the enduring appeal of the Ford Focus hatchback. There's a version for pretty much everyone, from the humble 1.0-litre EcoBoost to the brilliant 2.3-litre RS, and they're all good to drive. Whether you've a young family and are looking for something inexpensive and safe to run, or you're after a nimble and engaging hot hatch with a useful degree of practicality, chances others are focused to suit your needs. It's no surprise it's such a big seller. Third generation, five doors only the third iteration of Ford Focus was introduced in 2011 as a five-door hatchback and the separately reviewed estate. Gone from this generation of this lower-selling three-door hatch, the even less popular saloon and the unfancied coupe cabriolet. It's a majorly competitive sector that the Focus competes in with virtually every manufacturer offering thoroughly competent alternatives, the Vauxhall Astra, Volkswagen Golf, along with its seat Leon and Skoda Octavia siblings, as well as the Honda Civic, Hyundai i30, Kia Seed, Peugeot 308 and Renault Megane are just a few of the hatchbacks on the market giving Ford a headache. Rarely does the blue oval rest upon its laurels. Consequently this generation focus has been regularly honed and improved upon to help maintain its appeal. Key to its appeal and just visual and in terms of value for money, the focus has keen steering and a great gear change, in manual form, so keen drivers will feel like this car has been designed for them. Styling and quality overhaul in 2014 A significant facelift for the focus was introduced in 2014, although not for the slow selling electrically powered model, with a new bonnet front wings, bumpers, the front one incorporating a slender new grille, and slimmer headlamps. At the back, LEDs feature in the reshaped lights and there's a new tailgate design. Climb inside and you'll notice the cabin materials were upgraded too, with many models featuring an 8.0 inch touch screen at the top of the dashboard for the multimedia system, Sync 2 initially, then Sync 3 from 2017. All versions benefited from new instruments and redesigned switchgear giving a mild uplift in quality. Further enhancements were also made to the Focus's self-parking and active safety systems. Wide range of engine options the breadth of powertrain choices for the Ford Focus is extraordinary, with most of the petrols and all of the diesels featuring turbocharging for efficient performance. EcoBoost, re-turbo, petrols come in 1.0 and 1.5 litre geysers for the mainstream Focus range producing between 100 horsepower and 182 horsepower, yet with CO2 emissions of just 99 grams slash km for the least polluting version. Diesel fans have a choice of 1.5 and 2.0 litre units, serving up between 19.5 horsepower and 150 horsepower and, unsurprisingly, represent the most efficient of the conventional power plants for the Focus. In fuel sipping a kinetic form, the 1.5 C Focus has a claimed average of 83.1 miles per gallon with emissions of 88 grams slash km of CO2. You can go even greener with the very slow selling Focus Electric, which simply requires charging up to replenish its batteries, although the maximum range is limited to 100 miles before you'll need to plug it in again. On the plus side, the car itself is emission free. Fast Ford Legacy Focus ST and RS Ford has a proud history of offering high-performance versions of its regular family cars and this generation Focus is no different, offered in both hot ST and scorching RS forms. Petrol, 2.0-litre EcoBoost, 250 horsepower, and diesel, 2.0-litre C, 185 horsepower, versions of the Focus ST are offered, each with a racier body kit and deeper front grille, with enhanced performance and handling. Those petrol versions can reach 154 miles per hour and scurry from 0 to 62 miles per hour in 6.5 seconds. Introduced in 2016, the Focus RS is something else again, offering genuine performance car slaying speed, 165 miles per hour, 0 to 62 miles per hour in 4.7 seconds, from its 350 horsepower, 2.3 litre EcoBoost engine. Four-wheel drive and clever electronics keep the car stable or allow it to be playful, depending on your requirements, but while the body works suitably pumped up, it looks less outlandish than says of old. Ford Focus RS Mount Tune, is it worth it? If you want to add even more performance to your fast Ford, consider the £899 Mount Tune upgrade. We tested one back-to-back -back with a standard car, read our thoughts here. Packed with features Ford's Focus hatchback comes with a raft of technology to improve driver safety and ownership experience such as a blind spot indicator, self-parking function and autonomous emergency braking. 
Some of these features are available as options only while others, depending on the trim level you choose, are standard. There are 9 trim levels available from the entry level style that comes with aircon but no alloy wheels through to the Performance RS flagship, with the luxurious titanium models providing comfort for those seeking a more premium aura. The verdict you know what you're getting with the Ford Focus, and unless you're looking for the absolute last word in quality, you won't be disappointed. The choice of the range, RS aside has to be the more powerful 1.0-litre EcoBoost, which is frugal, when driven gently, and fun to drive. But all models are practical, too, with roomy rear seats and a usefully shaped, and very large, boot. For additional practicality, the rear seats fold down completely flat, which is far from usual in this market sector. If buying new, the ST-Line version is the one to go for, thanks to generous amounts of kit and sharp looks. As a used buy, the Focus works well. 2. And for the buyer, they come in significantly cheaper than the Volkswagen Golf. Overall, a very strong option, despite having been around since 2011. Is the package good enough to justify its top selling status? Read the full Ford Focus hatchback review to find out. Petrol, diesel and electric options most are turbocharged for efficiency flagship RS is staggeringly quick with a broad selection of 13 engine and gearbox combinations delivering the performance. If you can't find a Ford Focus that suits then you might as well take a trip to Picky R Us. Petrol, diesel and electric power plants are available, while higher performance motors are installed in the Focus ST and RS. Mainstream petrol choices Ford's turbocharged EcoBoost engines have grabbed many headlines, and here the technology is available in 1.0 and 1.5 litre forms. Kicking off proceedings is the 3-cylinder 1.0 litre in 100 horsepower form. That's enough for a top speed of 115 miles per hour, while 170 newton meters of torque means a leisurely 0 to 62 miles per hour time of 12.5 seconds. A 5-speed manual's the only transmission but different gearing means two different sets of efficiency statistics, as standard it delivers a claimed average of 61.4 miles per gallon and 105 grams slash km of CO2 but the more frugal alternative posts figures of 65.7 miles per gallon and 99 grams slash km. There's also a 125 horsepower edition of the 1.0 liter, the standard manual gearbox upgraded to a 6 speeder. With an accompanying torque increase to 200 newton meters, the 0 to 62 miles per hour is shaved to 11 seconds, while the top speed's 120 miles per hour if you fancy spending extra on a 6-speed automatic gearbox then one can be had with this engine, resulting in a 119 miles per hour top speed and a 0 to 62 miles per hour time of 12 seconds. These three-cylinder EcoBoosts offer impressive power for their size, although rivals newer units of a similar capacity tend to be less harsh. Six-speed manuals and optional automatics are available on both versions of the four-cylinder 1.5-liter EcoBoost motors. First up is the 150 horsepower version producing 240 newton meters of torque. Performance figures for the manual are a 130 miles per hour top speed and 8.9 seconds for the 0 to 62 miles per hour sprint. Opt for the auto and those numbers become 129 miles per hour and 9.2 seconds. Quickest of the 1.5S are the 182 horsepower additions, which still produce 240 newton meters of torque. Again, the manual transmission is the quicker of the two, with a top speed of 138 miles per hour, 137 miles per hour for the automatic, and a 0 to 62 miles per hour time of 8.6 seconds, 8.9 in automatic guys. Completing the range of non-sporty focus petrol engines are a pair of 1.6-litre TVCT units, without turbocharging, hence their meager 85 horsepower and 105 horsepower outputs. Both have 5-speed manual gearboxes. The less powerful motor produces just 141 newton meters of torque making it the slowest derivative of the focus range, with a top speed of 106 miles per hour and requiring a pedestrian 14.9 seconds to reach 62 miles per hour from a standstill. The Gutsche version does a little better courtesy of its 150 newton meters worth of torque, but even that's only sufficient for a 116 miles per hour top speed and a 12.3 second 0 to 62 miles per hour time. Economical diesel lineup The Focus's diesel fueled range starts off with the 1.5 litre DC in 95 horsepower form. 
That doesn't sound like a tremendous amount of power but it's 250 newton meters of torque outguns all the mainstream petrol engine figures, and like all the diesels, a 6-speed manual gearbox is standard. Top speed's just 112 miles per hour but it'll reach 62 miles per hour from a standing start in 12 seconds. Next up is a 105 horsepower edition of the same engine, here tuned more for economy despite the power and torque increase, it's up by 20 newton meters, hence the Econetic badges. Although it has a 116 miles per hour top speed, the 0 to 62 miles per hour time only just drops to 11.9 seconds. However, claimed economy is an impressive 83.1 miles per gallon, with CO2 emissions of just 88 grams slash km. Flashing out the top of the 1.5 litre diesel range is the 120 horsepower version, again with 270 newton meters but with a choice of the standard manual transmission or the optional twin clutch power shift automatic, it's a slow slow-witted gearbox and one we'd recommend avoiding if you can. Performance is rated at 120 miles per hour and 10.5 seconds for the 0 to 62 miles per hour with the manual, 119 miles per hour and 10.8 seconds for the automatic. You've a choice of the same two transmissions for the 150 horsepower 2.0 litre C. The engine's extra capacity helping ramp the torque figure up to 370 newton meters. It's a pleasingly sprightly performer, with a top speed of 130 miles per hour in manual form, and an 8.8 second 0 to 62 miles per hour time for the manual, 129 miles per hour and 8.7 for the power shift. Electric alternative it may well have escaped you, not least because Ford sells so few of them, but a Focus Electric is also available. Energy stored in a 23kWh lithium-ion battery, enough to give the electric a theoretical range of up to 100 miles between recharges. Its motor produces 142 horsepower and 250 newton meters of torque, enough to get from 0 to 62 miles per hour in 11 seconds. Top speed is governed to just 84 miles per hour. Sportier Focus ST versions enthusiasts will undoubtedly read the Ford Focus ST performance stats with beady eyes. What's interesting is that the 2.0 liter EcoBoost's 0 to 62 miles per hour time of 6.5 seconds isn't much slower than the previous generation RS, which could get there in 6.0 seconds. Okay, it's half a second off, but when you consider that the engine capacity in the old RS is 500cc bigger and that the RS model was supposed to be the pinnacle of performance in the focus range, this SD certainly gives a good account of itself. The engine in this model delivers 250 horsepower, maximum pulling power of 360 newton meters and, as well as the impressive 0 to 62 miles per hour time, it will go on to a top speed of 154 miles per hour the stats tell just a smidgen of the story. Not only is it fast, it feels fast. The performance is linear and smooth, but not so refined that you don't feel the raw brutality. The torque steer that has blighted some of the previous fast Ford models has been well restrained, and once you get up to third gear the scenery will have become a satisfying blur. On top of that you get a fantastic engine sound that is very addictive. For those seeking greater frugality, the SD is also available with an upgraded 185 horsepower edition of the 2.0 litre T diesel, with manual or power shift transmissions. 400 newton meters of torque ensures 0 to 62 miles per hour times of 8.1 seconds for the manual and 7.7 .7 for the automatic, while both post identical 135 miles per hour top speeds. Performance flagship Focus RS It's fair to say the performance of the Ford Focus RS is mind bending. It uses a turbocharged 2.3 liter, 4 cylinder EcoBoost engine from the firm's iconic Mustang. Battery tuned to deliver 350 horsepower and 440 newton meters of torque available between 2000 revolutions per minute and 4500 revolutions per minute, though the torque figure swells to 470 newton meters while in the 18 second overboost function upon initial acceleration. In terms of raw data that equates to a 0 to 62 miles per hour sprint in 4.7 seconds, with a top speed of 165 miles per hour, nothing else at this price point can match those figures. To hit 62 miles per hour as fast as the Focus RS will go means using the launch control system, which can be found in the trip computer menus by using the controls on the steering wheel. It's best saved for track use really though, because it takes a little too long to engage for most traffic light Grand Prix situations. Once you've selected launch control it's simply a case of standing on the accelerator and releasing the clutch quickly once you've built up turbo boost, 
handily displayed on one of the three gauges sat above the satnav screen. It sounds sensational too. On the road the power delivery is savage, and better still with the driving mode tweaked to allow the flap in the specially tuned exhaust to open, eliciting pops and bangs from the twin tailpipes that can't fail to make you smile. There's a hint of synthesized noise, it uses the same system as the Focus ST for that, but actually there is genuine engine sound mixed in there. We found the gear change to be excellent, although not as pleasing in operation as, say, a Mazda MX-5s with a longer throw and slightly more vague operation, but it does the job perfectly well. Steering feel has been dulled overall handling still impresses ST and RS are especially agile the previous generation focus was adept at cornering so we expected this iteration to be an improvement, but although it is competent, it's not quite so sharp. It appears Ford, in a bid to appeal to an even broader market, has made this car a little softer. On tight corners you get a little more body lean a little less grip and steering that just isn't as quick or accurate as that on its predecessor. Still, it's not bad, and if you do enter bends with gusto you will enjoy decent levels of grip, but again you will find the nose pushing more in a straight line on damp surfaces, which will require you to lift off the accelerator to get the car to tuck in. The Focus does feel softer which means it's not quite on par with the Volkswagen Golf for instance, and is only as good as the latest Vauxhall Astra. It is hard to pick fault at Ford, though. Yes, the Focus does feel less of a driver's car now, but the compromises made to deliver a more comfortable ride are probably worth it. SD line models, previously Zatec S, get stiffer suspension that helps reduce body roll, making the car feel more sporty, without overly compromising that ride quality. The main criticism of the mainstream Focus, however, is with the steering. The introduction of electronic power assistance has dulled the feel, which means there's less feedback coming through the wheel. The rest of the controls combined to give a positive driving experience, the brakes are excellent and gear change on the manual is smooth, but the power shift auto seems to restrict the car's progress rather than enhance it. We don't think the answer is to switch to manual mode and do the gear changes yourself because the buttons are located on the knob and it doesn't feel quite right, a fixed paddle shift like that on the Golf's DSG versions would have been a better solution. Sportier Focus ST The handling in the Ford Focus ST is also let down a little by the electric power assisted steering, which is best described as rubbery. Still that's probably the only complaint as far as the Ford Focus ST's dynamics are concerned. Although the steering may be low on feel, it's responsive on turn-in and is well weighted. Like the standard Focus, you get excellent road holding, but the sports suspension ramps up the agility a notch. Twisty roads are where the ST excels coping with fast and tight corners with these. The body control is excellent, with little lean on tighter corners. The six-speed manual gearbox is smooth, the clutch satisfyingly light and the brakes solid. There's plenty of wizardry to make sure you don't make a fool of yourself on the road. The Focus SD features torque vectoring control, which sounds fancy but this is a system that applies brake torque to the wheels on the inside of the corner to increase grip and reduce the car's tendency to go straight ahead instead of turn in. The car also features cornering understeer control, another piece of technical trickery that helps keep the car stuck to the road. In any event, this is a difficult car to fault as far as handling is concerned. Exhilarating Focus RS Hold On Tight The Focus RS has an innovative all-wheel drive, AWD, system which can send up to 70% of available torque to the rear axle, and 100% of that torque exclusively to one side of the car. It uses electronic clutch packs to measure out the torque extremely accurately, with the car computing the desired mix at a rate of 100 times per second. It uses a torque vectoring system in partnership with the AWD Tech, which programs the brakes to subtly tighten the Focus's line when required, eliminating understeer, the front end washing wide when you've gone too quickly into a corner, and improving agility. There's a fixed rated steering system installed as well which offers predictable and feel some cornering unrivaled in the sector. In its normal driving mode the RS is astonishingly grippy but relatively safe and benign, it's possible to flip to a tail happy drift king at the push of a button. In fact, you've got three handling modes to pick from if normal doesn't do it for you, but two are strictly for track use only. The most engaging setup for the road is Sport, which switches the AWD system to a more entertaining configuration and adds to the steering weighting. If you're out on a race circuit and want to go fast the track is the setting for you. This stiffens up the dampers by a huge 40%, 
making them quite probably unsuitable for some UK roads anyway. Make no mistake, this is a firm car at the best of times. The infamous drift mode finally, there's the industry first drift mode. Inspired by YouTube's sensation can block, this allows you to indulge in this sort of tail out antics usually only achievable on a rear wheel drive performance car. It retains the traction control but backs it off into a wide slip mode, allowing you to kick the rear end out and then maintain the slide thanks to fancy configuration of the AWD system. Doing so requires a different technique to a rear driven car, you keep your foot planted on the floor when the slide starts rather than backing off to balance the skid, but the end result is the same you'll be laughing like a hyena and visiting the tire shop regularly. That's unless it's wet, in which case you're simply going to have an amazing amount of fun. Hidden behind each set of 19-inch alloys are large Brembo brakes that perform very well. They're designed for heavy track use but aren't too aggressive for the road either, striking a good balance between progressive application and outright stopping force. While the exterior styling perhaps isn't as garish as the previous two RS focuses, it's worth noting that every single part is there for a reason. The front bumper design, rear roof spoiler and diffuser between the exhaust pipes all help this car feel amazingly stable at high speed because they're working together to make the focus perfectly balanced at either end. Dashboard improvements from 2014 reduced button count, quality uplift sporty versions feel too ordinary inside with that raft of buttons, particularly on the Ford Focus's steering wheel. It can initially be confusing but shouldn't take too long to learn where all the controls are. As part of the 2014 facelift, Ford reduced the switch gear count and introduced an 8-inch touch screen for models fitted with Sync 2. It's a big improvement but not as classy and fuss-free as a Volkswagen Golf's cabin. Disappointingly, there's little else to make the interiors of the Focus ST and RS feel much more special than the regular versions save for some contrasting stitching to the leather and a trio of supplementary dials at a jaunty angle atop the center of the dash. These gauges display oil temperature, turbo boost and oil pressure, but are small and require more than just a cursory glance to absorb the information. The front windscreen pillars are quite large but they don't hinder visibility that much, only when you are trying to pull out at junctions with acute angles. Rear visibility is good, however, although the door mirrors are squarer than most but do have a wide angle curvature to their outer edges. Ride comfort a strong point RS is very stiffly sprung, SD less so sports seats may be snug for some there's little to complain about the comfort on offer in the Ford Focus. The seats are supportive and comfy, with a broad range of adjustment and, combined with height and reach movement in the steering column, it's easy to find a decent driving position. We would have liked a little more lateral support to hem you in when cornering tightly, but it's not a deal breaker. The optional sports seats help here and are more comfortable but we'd recommend actually testing them to see if they are worth the extra outlay, it's not a cheap option. The ride is excellent, one of the best in the class, and even after a couple of hours of hard driving we emerged from the car feeling very fresh with no niggling aches or pains. Road and engine noise are well contained, but there is a little bit of wind rustle coming from the door mirrors. Mixed results with the faster Focus's Ford Focus ST Comfort could have been compromised by the sports suspension, but it tried surprising well, even over rutted roads. In city centres it'll deal with manhole covers without fuss and only the most pockmarked streets present a problem. Yes, it's firm, and yes there are more comfortable cars out there, but this is a high-performance sports car that's good enough for daily use. Secondly, the sports seats do a good job of hemming you in on tight corners and that's reassuring offering a firm, yet pleasing amount of support for your back. If you are a little on the portly side you may find them a bit tight. The Focus RS's low profile tyres and stiff suspension are going to make for bumpy progress in the UK, but most owners will put up with it for the sheer performance on offer here. Just keep those two stage dampers out of their stiffer mode because on most British roads that's likely to make the RS an unruly animal. We love the standard seats, though. They're beautifully finished and supportive albeit sitting slightly higher up than we were expecting. Less comfortable, but more supportive, are the optional Recaro shell seats, and they've proven popular with those who have ordered the car so far. Focus range comprises of 9 trim something for every budget and need ST line and RS joined in 2016 there have been a few rejigs over the years but in 2016 the Focus lineup expanded to 9 different trim levels, Style, Zaytec Edition, Electric, Titanium, Titanium X. SD-Line, ST2, ST3 and RS. 
Standard Ford Focus hatchback equipment style is the starting point of the Focus hierarchy and is decently appointed despite its low price point. It rides on 16-inch steel wheels, but also features electric front windows and door mirrors, a body-colored rear spoiler, remote central locking, aircon, DAB radio and Bluetooth connectivity. This can be built upon with the best-selling trim level, Zaytec Edition. This used to be a sportier grade but these days it represents something with more humble aspirations, hence chrome detailing at the window bases and across the grille. The exterior is also embellished with 16-inch alloy wheels, an electrically heated windscreen, side indicators built into the door mirrors, rear privacy glass and an 8.0-inch SYNC 3 multimedia system. Those seeking more luxurious surroundings should consider the titanium grade. It adds to the Zaytec Edition's kit roster with a different alloy wheel design, active city stop autonomous emergency braking, automatic lights and wipers, and auto dimming rear view mirrors, rear parking sensors, keyless entry and start, and dual zone climate control. Splurge on the Titanium X and there's even more kit on offer, 17 inch alloys, self parking function, a reversing camera, by Xenon headlamps with LED day running lights, electrically folding door mirrors, heated front seats, an electrically adjustable driver's seat, part leather upholstery and multicolored LED ambient lighting. Equipment-wise the electric sits somewhere just above the titanium but with the additions of the electric door mirror folding and LED interior lighting. Replacing the previous Zaytec s trim in 2016, ST line was effectively a renamed trim level rather than a whole new take on the Focus. It looks sportier with its 17-inch grey alloy wheels, bodyguard and black gloss mesh grille, LED day running lights and sports suspension. The interior also enjoyed a sporty makeover with sports-style pedals, steering wheel and knob. There are actually three subgrades of the sporty Focus Street, although none have the numeric part of the trim level anywhere on their badging, making it tricky to tell them apart at first glance. After the ST1 was dropped for 2017, the ST2 became the entry model. It comes with 18-inch alloy wheels, a full ST-specific body kit, keyless start, Recaro front seats with part leather upholstery, the SYNC 3 multimedia package, an electrically heated windscreen, LED day running lights, automatic lights and wipers and dual zone climate control. Topping this grouping is the ST3, gaining by Xenon headlamps, heated Recaro seats with leather upholstery, a three-person Recaro rear seat, Cruise control, a grey finish for the alloy wheels, red brake calipers, keyless entry and start and illuminated scuff plates. Performance and cost flagship is the RS, which is comprehensively equipped. In addition to its four driving modes and two-stage adaptive suspension, the RS features 19-inch alloy wheels hiding four piston Brembo brakes, a unique body kit with an aggressive frontal design and rear diffuser, automatic by Xenon headlamps and rain-sensing wipers. Inside you'll spot SYNC 2, 9 Sony speakers and special RS branded detailing including on the Recaro front and rear seating. Optional Ford Focus hatchback accessories depending upon which Focus you choose there are a plethora of individual options you can pay for to tailor the Ford more to your taste, including a wide range of metallic paints and alloy wheel upgrades, plus equipment such as adaptive cruise control, sat-nav upgrades, ingenious door edge protectors and rear privacy glass. Ford sensibly bundles various options together, although it consequently varies the price of the packages depending upon which trim level you're using as a starting point, as it may already have some of the elements as standard. Choose the convenience pack for self-parking functions, front and rear parking sensors, electrically folding door mirrors and one press lowering and raising of the electric windows. The city pack is an abbreviated version of the convenience one, limited to just the rear parking sensors and power folding door mirrors. Opt for the driver assistance pack for the active city stop autonomous emergency braking, lane departure warning to warn you when you're drifting out of the white lines, traffic sign recognition and automatic main beam for the headlights. There are also a handful of RS specific options including race style Recaro shell front seats and 19 inch black forged alloy wheels, but there's also a worthwhile luxury pack comprising of electrically folding door mirrors, rear parking sensors, keyless entry and start cruise control and rear privacy glass. Rated 5 stars by Euron Cap Active City Stop reduces insurance costs extra surety of all-wheel drive for RS Ford Focus safety is a key concern for a lot of car buyers and the good news is that it has been given the full 5 stars for crash protection by the independent experts, Euron Cap, which specializes in assessing cars crash protection.
The Focus is fitted with several crash protection features as standard including drivers, passenger and side airbags. The inclusion of stability control and ISOFIX child seat fittings as standard is to be applauded, but if safety is your priority you can specify the driver assistance pack that includes blind spot warning, lane keeping assist that steers you between the white lines, traffic sign recognition and automatic high beam headlights. It's worth noting that Active City Stop can have a positive effect by reducing your insurance premiums, as it massively reduces the chances of running into something or someone at lower speeds. Active Park Assist provides driver help when attempting parallel parking. It's activated at the push of the button and measures any gaps to see if the focus will fit in. Having found a parking space, the car will then provide instructions with audio prompts and on the heads-up display. The car does the steering leaving the driver to control the throttle and clutch. It's not perfect but some Ford Focus owners find this very useful. The High Speed Focus RS features a couple of additional safety elements, all-wheel drive enhances traction at low speeds, in spite of the handling histrionics introduced in some of its racer driving modes, and by xenon headlamps are included, too, for safer nighttime driving. Boot space is reasonable. Not class leading cabin isn't the most spacious storage protectors invaluable this generation Ford Focus is longer than its predecessor, and while it's a few millimeters narrower on the outside, extra width's been liberated inside the cabin allowing for more shoulder room, boosting the car's versatility and practicality. Legroom front and rear is ample, although the lower roofline does hamper headroom for taller passengers on the back bench. The boot is reasonable at 316 liters, but with all the rear seats down you'll get 1,215 litres at your disposal. It's not as good as a VW Golf, 380 litres with rear seats up and 1,270 with rear seats down, or a Vauxhall Astra, 370 litres and 1,210 litres. Be aware that if you choose a Focus RS, its all-wheel drive system impinges on boot space thanks to the mechanical gubbins under the floor, reducing capacity to 260 litres seats up. 1,045 litres when folded. One really useful feature is disappointingly optional. Door edge protectors pop out and wrap around the outer edge of the doors providing a rubbery shield to protect your paintwork, invaluable if you have kids and a narrow driveway.